Good God bless you on this miraculous month, on this Monday, the 14th of March. During all the March madness, we're believing God for miracles because the earth is in chaos. Hey man, there is things that are happening in this world that if you're not secure in who you are in God and you have no relationship with God or you're, or you're vacillating or you're having doubts or in these attacks, you know, that are happening, that if you're not under a firm or in or on or anchored in a firm foundation, your heart could faint for the fear that, 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 that you could experience with the things that are going on around you. Amen. So I just came to you today, amen, in the mighty name of Jesus to, to help increase your faith to speak into your life so that you would know that you 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 know that if God said it you can believe it he is not a man that he could lie or the son of man that he's got to repent if he said it he will bring it to pass no matter what it sounds like no matter what it looks like no matter what it feels like and that you could trust him with your life because he gave you life amen and uh, there's no way that we can handle these things in this world without faith man the bible says in hebrews 11 verse number one now faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen faith is the substance you can feel it it is in you, amen. You can't hold it with your hand, but you can definitely hold it with your spirit and hold on to it with your heart and with your mind and with your strength. It is substance that you can stand on when it seems like you're sinking and all around you is sinking sand and you're getting bombarded with all these doubts and all these questions that make you move away from the firm foundation in Christ that is found in faith. Amen. Faith is not figuring everything out. Come on, somebody. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Amen. It's like walking on a staircase in the dark. You can't see it, but you know it's there. Amen. And, 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 and you can be confident in this life because you have to come to the realization for yourself that God's word is true, that Jesus is real. He's not a figment of your imagination. He's not trying to manipulate you and control you. He is not man-made, that he has a hidden agenda. Everything that he has done has been written. Everything that he wants you to know, everything that he has for you has been written. The promises are sure, and you can stand on it. And that's what faith is. Faith is standing on it without having the complete understanding of how or why or what is going on. Praise God. The Bible says for verse number two of the 11th chapter of Hebrew says for by faith, the elders obtained a good testimony. We can see how faith works if we read what happened and how the characters in the Bible in the beginning of his word responded to the things around them. The Bible says that by faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of the things which are visible. Come on, somebody. God spoke into nothing and created everything. Look at Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, God, you see, God did it in the pre-existence of nothing. He spoke into nothing and created everything. And your faith has to be established 
in those words. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. You can go no further in your in your life or in your faith or in 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 your relationship with God if you don't believe that in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth if you believe it was a mistake if you believe it just happened because atoms bounced together and created an explosion and that's why we're we that's where we came from that is not faith amen and we know without faith it's impossible to please God amen God is 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 showing himself mighty in the beginning where he created the heavens and the earth amen the bible says in John 1:1 1, 1, in the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word was with God the same was with God in the beginning amen the beginning of your faith must be established in the beginning of the Bible. If you don't believe that God created the heavens and the earth, then there's no way on God's green earth that you're going to have strong faith. So believe God, regardless of what you're going through. Just like we believe that in the beginning he created the heavens and the earth, we must believe that if he created it, his plan for our life is better than any other plan than any other person has ever had for his or her life. The Bible says in, in verse number six, here, here's where I'm getting at. Hebrews 11, verse six. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is. And he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And, and faith in believing who God is, is the nucleus of faith. It is the nucleus of Christianity. There's nothing more that establishes your relationship in Christ is other than you having faith faith and who he is amen and we live in a world and i'm going to be doing a series i don't know how deep i may get into it today but i'm going to be doing a series to strengthen your faith on who he is because we live in a world that is so advanced in modern technology so advanced in 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 in, in book knowledge technological technological or in technology the knowledge of technology that we skip over faith amen we 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 discount and look down on people that have faith and this is in the mass in the world we have so many educated people, and there's nothing wrong with education, but education can, I mean, the superiority complexes and the, and the arrogance and the, and the uh, uh, rationalization that comes with education can hinder your faith. There's studies that go out that where people were born in church and and were raised in church once they get into college and come out of college there is a high percentage 40 percent in the two early 2000s i think I think like 43 percent or something like that they started in church they grew up in church but after they graduated college their faith in god and their relationship with christ ended because they moved away from faith in Christ into the academic uh, 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 snare of questioning if Jesus was the savior of the world, if the Bible was true or was it just man-made. 
and 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 that is the that is one of the traps that you have to you have to know about <coughs> if you want to stay in faith amen the more you learn the more you are susceptible to saying, if I can't figure it out or if it doesn't make complete sense, if I can't prove it um, like I proved 4 plus 4 is 8, then it can't be trusted. It is not true. There is no God. You know, and it just spirals. And it's not by happenstance that the educational system was the founding party that began to tear down the plan of God as it pertains to his order and his desire for how the system of this world should be set up. Prayer was taken out of school. Amen. Which was the premier part of establishing any educational system. They learn how to read and write through reading the Bible. Amen. The, 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 the genesis of education, the genesis of this world was based on biblical principles, on a biblical world view. But because there was corruption of God's word, it started corrupting the school system just like it began to corrupt the Garden of Eden when the serpent invaded God's territory and tricked Eve into eating the forbidden fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. We can trace back the results of what we're living in now all the way back to the beginning in the Garden of Eden. Because in the garden, before the fall of man, there was no need for faith. They didn't need to believe in the substance of things hoped for. And there was no need to believe in the evidence of things not seen. Because they walked with God in the cool of the day. Their relation was unbroken. There was no need to believe in things that could not be seen. Because they seen God as who they really, as he, he really was. They didn't have to hope for anything. Because everything they wanted, everything they needed was already there. Amen. They had no they were in the greatest and the highest creative part, the creative. They were in the most unified relationship with, with God than any other created being on earth. There was no need for faith. And what broke that relationship and that unity between God and his greatest creation was the deception of the serpent to convince Eve that God was trying to hold back knowledge, wisdom, and understanding because God didn't want his creation to be like him. Oh my goodness, the biggest lie in the world is that God was trying to hold something back to keep his creation from knowing what he knows. Come on, somebody. 
or experiencing what he experienced. He did not want his creation to have his relationship broken between him and them because a lower a lower form of knowledge his knowledge is above all knowledge you could ever read in a book his knowledge is above everything that you could ever learn in school his knowledge is beyond anything anybody else could show you but the devil possessed that serpent and 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 played on Eve's emotion and 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 tricked her into exchanging the superior relationship the superior knowledge of Jesus Christ God the Father and the Holy Spirit for a lower form of knowledge and that is what we're operating in now people think they're so smart and try to try to contradict the word of God and try to make you question who God is because they have manipulated the word into trying to prove that what is written in the Bible is not God inspired. It's not all you need. To have eternal life. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. The, they try to war against it. All the agnostics. All of the people that don't. All the people that that, 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 that are agnostic. All the people that, that, that are esoteric. All the people that... that, that, that um, that are atheist all the people that 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 uh that are saying that Jesus did not die and rise again that he wasn't born of a virgin mary all of the people that war against the gospel they are trying to get you to believe that they have some knowledge that is far greater than the knowledge of god but we know that without faith it's impossible to please God. And we know that the devil wants to steal your faith, kill your faith, and destroy your faith. And he did that to Adam and Eve in the beginning. So his game hasn't changed. He still does the same thing. There's nothing new under the sun. But if you believe God, the Bible said, you can say to this mountain, be ye removed and be ye cast in the sea. If you do not doubt in your heart, but believe those things that you say are true, you will have whatsoever you say. Blessed be the name of the Lord forever. Praise God. I want you to know today that there's a war going on for your faith. Amen. But if you if you can settle in your spirit today, that God, oh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Here we go. Here we go. We're going back to Hebrews. That if you believe when he says in Hebrews eleven six, without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must first believe that he is. And he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. You can cast down, hallelujah, every evil thought. And everything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. His knowledge is above all knowledge. His ways are above all ways. And you have to tell yourself and tell those people that are trying to make you doubt Jesus. 
and doubt his word, that you're going to believe God because I, you are going to believe that he is and you're going to believe that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. This is not a time for us to pull back, to sink into darkness, to, to cower in the, in the corners of our mind, in our houses. But it's, it's, it's time for us to, to loose our faith and cast it into the sea of his word and be anchored in the spirit of God that hovered over the great deep, hallelujah, and to be anchored that when God said, let there be light, there was light, come on somebody, and no matter how dark it gets, I'm speaking life and light into your life, amen, you can talk to God and say, God, you said, taste and see that the Lord is good in Psalms 34. And I'm doubting right now. My soul is hungry right now. I'm, I'm looking for an answer. If you are really the Christ, the, the son of the living God, show me. And I'll trust you. He will prove himself to you. But you can't let the enemy steal the pure word and wisdom and knowledge of God out of your soul because of the times that you're living in, the way that you were taught in school. Come on, somebody. They're not trying to keep you born again in school. No, 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 no. They're trying to prepare you for a dog-eat-dog -dog society. Amen. They're trying to teach you ways that war against the ways of God. And I'm going to prove that to you. I'm going to keep on sharing that with you through these talks for the next three or four weeks or the next three or four days, depending on how the Lord knows how long it's going to take. But I'm going to take my time and I'm going to show you why I believe what I believe and how I came to this understanding. But understand this, in the Garden of Eden, there was nothing broken, nothing missing. There was no need for faith. They were operating in a knowledge of God that we can only hope for at the return of, of Christ. When we will be caught up hallelujah, in the clouds to forever be with the Lord, where the dead and Christ will rise first with the trump of God, the voice of the archangel. There will be a reconnection of what was lost in the garden on that return. But until that day, our faith, must keep us diligently seeking the Lord. Whoo, hallelujah. The Bible says in verse number seven, by faith, Noah was warned of the flood and he began to preach morning, noon, and night as he built the ark to save everybody he could and the animals. Mm -hmm. By faith he did it. Nobody said he went to, he didn't have a college degree. Now listen to me. I am not warring against your college degree. I'm not warring against your education. I'm warring against the fruit by which it can produce if you lose your faith because you don't, you, for, you, you forgot your first love and you don't believe what you were taught when you were growing up in, in, in the church. I war against that, yes. There's nothing around. Get all you can and can all you get when it comes to education, to knowledge, to understanding. But if it comes against, if it, if it takes your faith away, what profit does it make you? What profit does it give you if you win all of the accolades that are found in this world but lose your eternal soul 
because it you you gave it away. The devil did not take Eve and wrestle her to the ground and make her eat the forbidden fruit. She did it of her own will. We can't blame God if we give away our faith is what I'm saying. We can't blame God. We have to fight for our faith and we fight for it by diligently seeking the Lord. The Bible says by faith, the world's Huh? We're framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of the things which are visible. But you have to believe that because we know that without faith, it is impossible to please God. So I'm speaking into your spirit today. Receive faith. Receive the word of God because by faith, Noah was divinely warned of the things that were not yet seen. He had never seen rain. Neither had anybody on the earth at that time. There was no rain down coming from heaven. No. No. There was mist coming up from the garden that, 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 that nurtured and fed the whole wide world. They didn't know what rain was. They had no idea what he meant when he started talking about it's gonna rain for 40 days and 40 nights and the earth was gonna be flooded. But he did not doubt that what God said wasn't true. He knew it was true and he acted by faith. And the Bible said that when he acted by faith, he was moved by godly fear and he prepared an ark for the saving of his household. His household was saved by his faith. Your household still can be faith no, saved by your faith regardless of how far of how far regardless of how far they've moved away from the truth. Amen. There were so many forms of godliness on this earth that denies Christ that it ain't funny. But you got to understand it started in the garden where these two, this couple denied God and went against his command and fell because they thought that they knew something more than God, that they wanted to become like God. And it was a lie. They gave it up. They gave up their relationship because of a lie. And they became a God unto them own self. They said, whenever you say, I know more than God, that this is a revelation that, that I have for my life without God, without the word, without the Holy Ghost, without Jesus, you have become a God to yourself. You have created yourself as, as a God and you have lost your relationship with the Lord. Now, I'm not saying these things to bring you, to, to hurt you but to bring you to a place of, of, of realization that, that, that without God, your life will be incomplete. Without Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you'll never be satisfied. You can't get smart enough. You still won't be satisfied. You can't get rich enough. You still will not have satisfaction. You can't get popular, pop enough. I can't speak today, but you can't get more popular. It will not satisfy you. There's no popularity that you can get. There's nothing on earth that will satisfy you without Jesus being in the center of your life. 
Now, if you've never given to your life to the Lord, you've never given into the, the, the leading and the wooing of the Holy Spirit, if you've never made Jesus Christ your personal Lord and Savior, or if you have wandered away from the pure milk word nourishment of, and faith of Jesus Christ, the Bible says right now is your appointed time. Now is the day of salvation. Today is the day of salvation. Now is your appointed time. Your appointment to get right with God is right now. The Bible says that the gift of God is eternal life, but the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. No man can save himself. Jesus said, no man comes to the Father except through me. Well, how do I go through Christ? It doesn't make sense. By faith. Repeat after me. If you know that this word is for you and you haven't been living a life that is pleasing to God, I want you to say with me, Father, I believe in you. I trust in you. Lord, I ask you to be my personal Lord and Savior. I ask you to come into my heart and make your heart my home. Father, I, I, I exchange my life for yours. In the name of Jesus, I lay down my life and I ask you to hide me through your blood. Wash me in your blood. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness and I will serve you as you show me how. In the name of Jesus, be my Lord and Savior. Now, devil, I do not belong to you. Devil, I forsake you. Devil, I denounce you. Devil, get away from me now in the name of Jesus. I belong to Jesus now. Jesus is my personal Lord and Savior. I break that tie with you. I have faith in Christ. I break every, every demonic stronghold that you have over my life. I break every curse that you have placed over my life. I am washed in his blood. I am a new creature in Christ Jesus. I'm washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. I want new beginnings, Lord. I thank you for breaking the chains and breaking the addictions and breaking every evil spirit over me every bondage every stronghold in the name of Jesus I receive you Lord in Jesus mighty name I pray in Jesus name amen 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 God bless you on this miraculous month. I'm believing God for miracles in your life, no matter what the attack, no matter what the enemy has did to you, that all things will work for your good because you're called from the Lord and you, according, you are called unto the Lord, that you are the Lord's child and that you love God and you're called according to his purpose. And then all things going to work for you. Even the things you can't see. His ways are so above us. Hallelujah. Thank God for blessing me. Lord, I pray that you would just cover them. Keep them. Give them peace, Lord. Let them see that your grace is sufficient. And no one, not one weapon that's formed against him will prosper. Not one attack will will be victorious in their life, God. That every trap that is set against them, that the people, places, or the things that set them against them will fall in them themselves. Hallelujah. That let the evil, hallelujah, slay the wicked because the righteous are crying and the Lord heareth them and he delivereth them out of all of their troubles. And I thank you for your word and thank you for delivering us from all of our troubles, God. We so bless your name today. We are so thankful for you, Lord. We are thankful for everything that you're doing in our life, Lord. And we bless you and we ask you to continue 
to help us be our shield and our exceeding great reward in the mighty name of Jesus. It's Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. Hebrews chapter 6, no, I mean chapter 11, 1 through 6, 1 through 7. Be praying for us, Lord. Be, be, be praying for us, uh, family. Ask God to continue to bless and keep us as I'm praying that God continues to bless and keep you. In Jesus' mighty name, I love you. Peace be unto you from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. May you prosper and be in good health even as your soul prospers. I love you. This is Brother Keith calling, calling you my friend. <laughs> I love you guys. God bless you. Peace in Jesus' name.